Have you ever popped the hood of your car and noticed those black, rubbery belts wrapped around different parts of the engine? They might not look like much, but they're actually doing a lot of heavy lifting to keep your car running smoothly. In today's video, we're diving into something that's often overlooked but super important, engine belts. We'll break down what they do, why they matter, and what can happen if one fails. Don't worry, we'll keep it simple and easy to follow. Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. To start off, let's talk about what engine belts actually are. Basically, these are strong rubber belts that connect different parts of your car's engine. Their job is to help transfer power from the engine to other parts that need it. Even though they don't look too impressive, these belts are really important for your car to function. There are two main kinds of engine belts, the serpentine belt and the timing belt. They both do very different things, but they're both essential. Let's break them down one at a time. First up is the serpentine belt. This one is long, thin, and kind of snakes its way around several parts of the engine. Kind of like, well, a serpent. It powers different things all at once, like your car's alternator, which keeps the battery charged, and your air conditioning system, which keeps you cool. It also helps the power steering system, so you can turn the wheel easily, and sometimes it even helps run the water pump, which keeps your engine from overheating. Most modern cars use only one serpentine belt instead of having separate belts for each part. That's great because there are fewer parts to worry about, but it also means that if the belt breaks, a lot of important systems can stop working at the same time. Now let's move on to the timing belt. This one has an even more serious job. While the serpentine belt powers things outside the engine, the timing belt works deep inside it. It connects two important parts, the crankshaft and the camshaft. These need to work together at just the right time so that the engine's valves open and close exactly when they're supposed to. That's why it's called the timing belt. It keeps everything running in perfect timing. If the timing gets off, the engine can start to run rough, stall, or even get damaged. In some engines, if the timing belt breaks, the pistons and valves inside the engine can crash into each other. And when that happens, the repairs can be very expensive. So why are engine belts such a big deal? Without them, a lot of things in your car just wouldn't work. Your battery would die because it wouldn't be getting charged. Your engine could overheat because the water pump would stop. You'd have a hard time steering, especially at low speeds. And in the case of the timing belt, your engine might stop completely or even break down internally. Even though belts seem like simple parts, they connect everything together. They quietly keep your engine and its parts working as a team. Without them, the whole system falls apart. Now, just like other parts of your car, belts can wear out over time. They're made of rubber, and eventually, they can crack, stretch, or snap. If a belt is starting to go bad, there are a few signs you might notice. For example, you might hear a high-pitched squealing noise coming from the engine, especially when you start the car or turn on the air conditioning. You might also see cracks or frayed edges on the belt if you take a look under the hood. Sometimes you'll lose power steering or notice that the battery light comes on. Your engine might even start to overheat. And every now and then, you might smell something that kind of smells like burning rubber. If you see or hear anything like that, it's a good idea to get the belt checked. It's much better to replace a worn out belt than to wait for it to break completely while you're on the road. So, when should you replace your engine belts? Well, it depends on your car 
and how often you drive it. Most serpentine belts last somewhere between 60,000 and 100,000 miles. Timing belts usually need to be replaced between 60,000 and 90,000 miles. But those numbers can vary depending on the make and model of your car. The best thing to do is check your owner's manual. It will tell you the recommended mileage for changing the belts. Also, your mechanic can check the belts during regular maintenance and let you know when it's time. Keep in mind that timing belts usually don't show warning signs before they fail. That's why it's really important to replace them on time, even if they seem fine. Now let's talk about what could happen if a belt does break. If the serpentine belt breaks while you're driving, you'll probably notice it right away. The steering will get harder, the battery light might come on, and the temperature gauge could rise quickly because the engine is starting to overheat. You might still be able to drive for a short distance, but not for long. If the timing belt breaks, the situation can be much worse. In some engines, this causes the moving parts inside to crash into each other. That can bend or break parts inside the engine, and repairs can be extremely costly, sometimes even more than what the car is worth. That's why staying on top of maintenance is so important. One quick note here, some cars don't have a timing belt. Instead, they use a timing chain, which is made of metal and lasts much longer. In many cases, a timing chain can last the life of the engine. But if it does wear out, it's more expensive and complicated to replace than a rubber timing belt. So to wrap everything up, engine belts may not look like much, but they're absolutely essential to keeping your car running. The serpentine belt powers a lot of the outside systems like the alternator and air conditioning. The timing belt keeps the engine running in sync on the inside. If either of them goes bad, you could be looking at anything from annoying problems to major engine damage. Taking care of your engine belts doesn't require a lot of work. Just make sure you're checking them during regular service. Follow the recommended schedule in your manual and pay attention to any unusual sounds or smells. A little attention now can save you a lot of trouble later. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.